What's up guys, this is Phone Tech Kid, and today we're going to be taking a look at the first smartwatch that's actually running a full version of Android. Guys, this is the $200 IconBit Callisto 100. <laughs> So this smartwatch comes out of the box running Android 4.2.2 and the best part is you do get a fully functional Play Store which no other smartwatch has to offer to this day. And by fully functional I mean you could download any app you want from the Play Store. That doesn't mean it's going to be the most comfortable to use on such a small display but it is possible. And I wanted to test this smartwatch out to the max. And by doing that, I installed an app called TeamViewer, which let me control my computer from my smartwatch. And using the smartwatch's 1.2 GHz dual core processor, I was actually able to perfectly control my computer from my smartwatch. Now, it wasn't the most comfortable using it, of course, but it did work. And that just shows the processor speed that this device includes. When it comes to the design of the smartwatch, it's very minimalistic and doesn't stand out. And that's a good thing, as you don't want people looking at you like you're a cyborg. On the right side of the device, we get our power button at the top, a camera in the middle, and also the home button on the very bottom. On the left side of the device, we don't have that much going on. We have a slot for our SIM card, and we also do have our magnetic charging port that comes with a case to charge the device. The Callisto 100 is a standalone device. It does not connect to any smartphone. Instead, it gives you a SIM card port, and you could stick a SIM card in, and then it includes a phone and messaging app. And with this phone app, you could call anybody you want. Now, I did test the phone, and it performed fairly well, you do have to listen through the speaker, so you're not going to be able to talk to people in public as it'll probably add a lot of background noise, and I don't think you want people hearing your conversation. But we also do get a messaging app where you could go and message anyone from your contact book as you would on any smartphone. The screen size comes in at 1.54 inches, and it comes with a 240 by 240 colored TFT display. Now yes, it does seem like things are going backwards. First, we're trying to get the biggest, biggest phone that we could possibly get with the biggest screen, and now suddenly, we're kind of switching back to the small screens that feel more compact. So yeah, I don't think any of you thought two years ago that your phone would be able to fit on your wrist. And I know what you're thinking, how are you supposed to type on a display that's so small? Well, in the beginning, it does take some learning curve to get used to, but the best thing is that you do get a Play Store, so you can go and install any third-party keyboard that there is, and there are specific keyboards that are being made for smartwatches, so definitely stay tuned for that. So now let's pop up into the settings of the device to show you some of the cool options that we do get to customize on our smartwatch. If we pop in, we do get some different sections. And the one that I want to focus on is the system. So if we open up system, this is where most of our customization is going to happen. We do get to customize our notification section. And then we get to probably the most interesting settings, and that's under display. And this is where we can go and change our clock faces. As remember, this still is a smart watch. So it does have a bunch of different clock options to go through. The clock options range from digital to analog, and one that I chose here is the analog clock, and it looks really good on this display. One option that will hopefully be added in the near future is for the clock to always be seen even when it is locked, because as of now, when it is locked, you have to click the power button to see the time, which can be a problem. When I mentioned the buttons, you didn't hear me mention the back button or the menu button, and they have special gestures for that. So here's the power button at the top, as I showed you before, to unlock the device. Then the bottom button is for accessing your home, 
And then we get the two other gestures. So if we pop up into app like settings, if you swipe from the right side of the screen, then you basically hit the back button. And we could do this a couple more times just to show you. And it does sometimes cause accidental presses. So if we go into an app that I installed like XDA, which again loads fairly quickly with the fast processor and let it load and then if we go into any section and swipe from the right again as you can see it did go back but it did accidentally click something too so that might be a problem sometimes and if we swipe from the left that opens up the menu so if we swipe again there's the menu right there so that's how you use the gestures on the device so as I mentioned it does come with a camera and the camera is a 3 megapixel camera now, I don't suggest you using it as it's very awkward to take pictures on a smartwatch. So definitely carry around an extra camera if you are going to use this as your main device. Last but definitely not least was the battery life. And it was great. I was able to get around three days of heavy use with this device. And I was not expecting that. Other smartwatches, for example, like the Galaxy Gear could go for one day. But this was able to go three days and I was using it as my main phone so I was very impressed with that let me just say that I'm very impressed with this device and it only comes in at 200 which is cheaper than the Galaxy Gear and cheaper than the Pebble Steel so it's definitely a really good watch and I highly recommend it thanks for watching